all, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Kristen. I post a video here every Monday, um, so please like and subscribe if you like what you're seeing. And for those of you that aren't new here, thanks for coming back. Today, I'm excited to share a little bit about uh, choosing your wedding registry and those kind of tips that I had on what you should be doing with your wedding registry and how you should go about this really daunting and overwhelming, but also, fun task because you're in the end registering for gifts that you want that people are going to buy you to put in your home. So that's really exciting and fun. Okay, so jumping right in this, rule number one, let's just say, um, you should, when creating a wedding registry, do it in two different areas, at least two. You can do multiple places, but I would suggest doing at least two. Uh, one online because some people really love going on Amazon, clicking on their two-day prime shipping, and then letting it come to their door. But then also there's people that love going to Bed Bath & Beyond and walking around and, and looking at the things that you chose and seeing if they really want to buy this for you. And that is a little fun adventure for them. So you never want to take away either one of those people's likes of their way of shopping. Uh, so what I did was I chose Amazon and I chose Bed Bath & Beyond because I know that I personally love just being able to click on it and getting it to my house, but also sometimes people love going to the store. So I would suggest doing two, uh, at least two options. And then if you are thinking about doing an Amazon registry, which I love Amazon, so obviously I chose that, they do have this button where you can add from any other website. So I added from Hobby Lobby, I added from Target. You can add from anywhere. And so I thought that was a really cool tip just to share with you guys if you are uh, creating a wedding registry because there are a lot of things in a lot of different places that you're gonna want, but you really wanna minimize how many registries you have. If you have more than five, that's a little ridiculous. Um, so I do think that the Amazon tool is helpful in getting other websites items into your registry. Okay, so moving on, number two would be to be aware of people's price ranges and be aware of your own price range. So yes, you may want um, let's just say you want to go skydiving and you want to put that on your registry, which is super fun and cool. Uh, you can go ahead and allow people to pay that full skydiving fee for you or allow multiple people to contribute towards that skydiving gift. That way there aren't people that feel bad that they can't give you anything for your wedding because all of your prices are really high and they can't afford that. Another thing is just to make sure any products or items that you are asking for your home or um, anything else that you're registering for is there's some from like the zero to 20 mark, but there are also some in like the 50 marks and the 100 marks, and then just a little bit in um, anything above 100. So my registry is mostly under 50, uh, just because I don't really need anything crazy expensive. I know there's like a, a steamer that I want that's over 100, which is ridiculous but they do last a while so i do understand why they're expensive um, but it's just being aware of who you're inviting to your wedding and knowing that they're going to want to give you a gift and you don't want to um, have them having their feelings hurt because they can't afford anything on your registry because all you have are expensive items um, so that is something to keep in mind just making sure you have a wide price variety of all those gifts okay number three um, earlier in a video, I can go ahead and tag that below, I showed you my wedding tips, wedding planning tips, and how I use The Knot. I absolutely love The Knot. You can go ahead and watch that video for more information regarding all of my wedding process with The Knot. Uh, this is not an ad. <laughs> so I love The Knot also for their registry um, options. I don't know how to say that. Uh, anyways, on my wedding website, through the knot, there is a registry tab. I know this is a lot of information. And they have the knot give back program. So you can go ahead and anyone who buys a gift from your registry through their website, they go ahead and give back a portion of that money to a program or a charity that you chose. And so I chose uh, the Alzheimer's Foundation because my lovely, amazing grandfather uh, passed away with Alzheimer's not too long ago. So I wanted to make sure that the people that are spending their money 
and giving me gifts for my wedding were also a little bit of that was giving back to my grandpa and the cause um, that he died with. So I love that they have the option. There are so many other programs or charities or foundations that you can choose from, but that is something really important. And I'm really glad that I found that because no one told me about it. And I would like, I would like a little bit of, um, of the gifts that people are giving me to go back to helping find a cure so people don't have to lose their family members either. Okay, now for adding items into your registry. Like I said earlier, this is overwhelming, this is stressful. There's so much stuff that you can add. Literally anything in the world you can add to your registry. There's so much stuff. So you want to make sure that you're not just adding these things that you don't need um, instead of the things that you actually do need. So what I would do, and what I did do, is take inventory of things we already have and things we do not need. And go ahead and make sure that you know that at the top of your head. If you need to replace something or you have something old that's going to break soon, then yes, of course, add that. Uh, but you want to make sure that you're adding things that you need first and then like the fun, uh, like posters on the wall and decorations type of things. Um, so I would advise you to go, um, if you're going to an in-store, they will probably have like a catalog for you to say, oh yeah, this is actually a really good idea. I didn't even think about putting a hamper on my wedding registry. And then also if you're going on Amazon, they have this tab where it says um, frequently added to registries or something like that. And you can go ahead and look through that and say, oh yes, I did need a coffee maker or oh yes, I did need a handheld vacuum. There's just a lot of things that you can use in your home um, that would make it a lot easier and a lot of things that you don't have already that you've been wanting. And so that'd be nice to go ahead and look through the list of what other people put on the registry to know, yes, I would like that or no, I really don't need that. Um, so that's something fun that you can do with your fiance. Just look at other registries on those websites or in those catalogs at the stores and see what you guys need because everyone's different. Everyone needs different things in their home. Um, yes, you do need the basics like silverware and plates and cups. Uh, but something that I like doing was to look at other things and make note of when I'm around the house, like, oh, it would be really nice to have a whisk instead of doing this with my hand or something like that and writing it down so that I could put it into the registry. Okay, number five is to update it. I update mine probably monthly uh, based off of going around the house and saying, oh my gosh, how have we lived without a steamer or an iron? We probably need one of these. Um, and then just adding that and going online to Amazon, it's so easy. I just do it on my phone and I say, yes, we need this one and we put it there. And also going through and saying, do I really need this vase for these flowers? And no, I, I can put this on one of my wish lists that are private. And if all of my gifts aren't bought, I can add that on there, but it's really not something necessary. And so I don't want people, um, buying things that I'm not going to use or need. Um, so I think that it's really important to, like I said, tip number four was to look at other people's registries, but tip number five is to constantly be updating it and making sure that the things on this are things that you actually are going to want and actually going to use instead of things that just, oh, that would be fun to have if blank happens and blank will never happen. Uh, so these are my fun little five tips on wedding registries. Uh, it is fun I to make a date out of going to the store, me and my fiance, we went and we just grabbed a gun and like ding, 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 on everything, but then we got home and we're like, we went a little crazy. We don't need, yes, this was actually one of the things we don't need. I think it was $500 uh, knives from the volcanic ashes of Hawaii. I don't know. But we clicked on it and then we got home and we realized that we were just way over our heads. Um, so that is something to do. I started my wedding registry way in advance before any of the bridal showers just to make sure that I am um, only getting the things necessary and the things that I will actually use. So if you have any more questions about wedding registries um, or if you need any ideas, Target's a great place, Kohl's, those big department stores are awesome, but I definitely 100% recommend doing the Knot Give Back program through the Knot registries and adding Amazon because Amazon is amazing. You can get everything 
any from any website onto your Amazon registry and it's two day prime shipping. So who likes waiting for packages really long? I do not. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Uh, like I said, if you like this, go ahead and like it and hit subscribe below. I have my Instagram link in the description if you'd like my daily paleo recipes and my life because it's crazy and fun and I do weird things all the time. Alright, <laughs> bye y'all.